Formula 1, there is an age-old struggle. Add more wing and you go faster in the corners, but slower on the straights. But F1 engineers want both. And there have been some genius ideas to try and get both upsides. But none as simple and clever as the F-duct, an innovation by McLaren in 2010. You may have heard about this before, but today we're going to explain some things about the F-duct that you may not know. The F-duct caught the eyes and the imaginations of the F1 world and was copied throughout the grid before it was eventually banned, but not before it changed a fundamental aspect of the sport as we know it, but more on that later. After all, it's the genius, cheeky innovations that we all love F1 for. McLaren was the centre of attention in 2010 when they turned up to pre-season testing with something no one saw coming. It was a device known internally as Project RW80, but you probably know it as something else, the F-duct. And it was their genius way to go much faster down the straights without compromising the corners, giving them lap time and overtaking power. When McLaren unveiled their MP4 25 for the 2010 season, they hoped that their shiny game-changing device would fly under the radar. Unfortunately for McLaren, F1 teams have eyes, and they left this device exposed on the bodywork for everyone to see. To be honest, it was pretty obvious, and everyone was curious about exactly what it did. It was quickly dubbed the F-duct, after the exposed inlet that was located on the top of the car was on the F of the logo of McLaren's main sponsor, Vodafone, with an F, not a PH. So what was this weird piece of bodywork, and how exactly did it work? Well, the f duct was essentially a series of inlets and pipes around the car, plumbing, essentially. This allowed McLaren to control the airflow around the car in a completely new way. They could take the air from the front of the car and use it to break the airflow over the rear wing, essentially making it worse at creating downforce. But of course, you might ask, why on earth would you want the rear wing to be worse in the first place? Well, back then, the underside of the cars, the floors, were very simple, though F1 cars really relied on the wings to create the downforce, which they were very good at. But wings create a load of drag, and so the cars were slower on the straights, which of course isn't a good thing. And remember, this was before the drivers had the overtaking tools, namely DRS, that they have available to them today. You have three types of drag that um, a wing will produce. You have the uh, form drag, which is you know the shape of the wing. You have the skin drag, which is minimal. Then you have the induced drag, which is how the wing churns the air up as it goes through the air. And this is what you would see as vapor trails on a damp day. What looks like a really cool thing is actually vortices being produced by the tips of the wings, which produces loads of drag. You can get rid of that, then you've got the perfect solution. The ideal situation for F1 teams would be to switch the drag on and then switch it off again to give downforce in the corners, but then higher speeds on the straights. But to make things awkward, the regulation bans any movable aerodynamic devices. And this is what made McLaren's solution so very clever. It used a part of the car that no one suspected as being a movable aerodynamic device, the driver. So back to Scarbs to explain a little bit more. McLaren's idea was to blow air through a slot underneath the wing. And what this would do would trip the airflow up, all the airflow passing under the wing would completely break up and that would stall the wing. When you stall the wing, you lose all of that induced drag and that allows you to um, go so much faster on the straights. But the question is, how do you switch off the air blowing in and out of that slot under the rear wing? So as we saw, the shark fin attached to the rear wing on that McLaren, and if we lead that forwards, it goes into a cross-shaped duct, which was basically the F-duct. Now what would happen in this cross-duct inside uh, the bodywork just above the engine is really clever. So what you had is one inlet, which we will call the, you know, the feed duct, came from the roll hoop, air went in here and then went straight across the cross in the uh, F-duct down to just below the um, rear beam wing, which is a very low pressure area. So the air naturally would just pass straight down here, straight out, no effect whatsoever. But then we have the other duct, which crosses back up over the F-duct. Now, this is what I call the control duct. So what this did, this picked up air, as we said earlier, under the F in the Vodafone on the front of the car, went down inside the cockpit and came in to a little junction just next to the steering wheel. And naturally there was an outlet there, which when you're going along the straight, the air would come through that duct and go straight out and just blow inside the cockpit. It would do nothing at all. But on straights, when the driver put their back of their hand over that duct, it then diverted that airflow and continued on that duct until it came up 
into this crossover duct. It actually came up directly vertical into where that airflow is crossing over. When that air started then to blow, the coanda effect, which allows the airflow from the roll hoop duct, this, um, you know, the, the feed duct, which would naturally pass straight over, the coanda effect was tripped up at that point of the crossover. What this then meant was the airflow would, rather than going down the duct out below the rear wing, would go into the upper duct, which fed out through the shark fin into the rear wing and would start blowing that slot which would stall the rear wing. So effectively what you had was an on-off system that just required the driver's hand to cover over a duct. So essentially, when the driver wanted, they could activate this system by covering a hole in the cockpit, stalling the rear wing and ditching all that drag and giving them a speed boost down the straights. This is what makes it genius because the driver is an aerodynamic device and you can hardly mandate that the drivers sit perfectly still. So the FIA couldn't stop this from happening on technical grounds. McLaren got the head start over their rivals so were able to play with and develop the f duct system throughout the entire year. And at Monaco they even introduced more inlets on the rear wing to boost its effectiveness and at Monza they ran a completely different setup entirely. So typically at Monza because it's so quick you run the smallest wing possible. You want to go quick down straights and really the corners there aren't that important. And that year Hamilton ran the traditional skinny Monza wing without the F duct. But Jensen Button didn't. Just look at this. Because of the F duct he could still run a massive rear wing. This allowed Button to have both benefits great straight line speed and great downforce for better braking and cornering. Not to mention allowing him to protect his tyres too, as he wasn't sliding quite as much through the corners. Unfortunately for us, Hamilton crashed out of the race on lap one after driving into Felipe Massa, so we weren't able to say how much effect the F duct actually had. But Button did outqualify Hamilton by three tenths of a second. Hamilton even said post qualifying that he should have gone with the F duct setup. I need to tell you about this week's sponsor. Quadlock. Quadlock has revolutionized the smartphone mounting market since 2012 with the introduction of their range of phone case based products including the suction windscreen mount, adhesive dash console mount and the quadlock vent mount that create endless phone mounting possibilities. Now I use a quadlock myself and they're all so easy to install, provide 360 degree rotation capabilities and have optional wireless charging compatibility so you're never caught out while on the road. This makes them perfect if you need to use maps to find your way home, take hands-free calls or just listen to music on the go. Quadlock has also just launched their new range of mag products which includes a thinner and flatter case that's customizable with six colored magnetic rings to choose from and two new quadlock heads in both wireless charging and standard options but don't worry quadlock has made sure that the new case is compatible with all existing quadlock mounts allowing customers to mount their phones securely for every adventure the quadlock range now includes mounts for cycling driving running motorcycling photography and a range of lifestyle options so it's the very best smartphone mount for an active life Style. Make sure you check out Quadlock using the link below. They are really, really good products. Right, back to the video. How did we get to the point where Fernando Alonso is driving down the pitch straight at the Spanish Grand Prix, no handed in his Ferrari? Well, everyone quickly copied McLaren's new invention, but not completely. Every team had their own ideas on how to run the F duct. Cyber were actually the first team to copy the idea, introducing their initial version at the second race in Australia, with the F duct placed on the side pod rather than on the chassis. While Mercedes had it placed right behind the front suspension and the F-Dug fed the rear wing end plates. Mercedes would actually really push the limits of this system in the coming years but we'll get to that in a bit. And at Ferrari they felt they had already optimized the airflow into the airbox and were unwilling to change it when integrating the F-Dug. So they created additional slots in the engine cover bodywork to take in the airflow. All of the other teams would eventually add the F-Dug system onto their cars throughout 2010. It was fair to say it was a great innovation but it was something as simple as the positioning of the hole the drivers covered up that really doomed the f ducts because mclaren had designed their car to include the f duct from the beginning the hole was placed in a position that was easier for the drivers to reach hamilton and button would cover up a hole using their left elbow so they didn't have to remove their hand from the steering wheel keeping a secure grip on it but as the other teams had to add the f duct into their already completed car designs they had to come up with other solutions that weren't quite as secure cure for the driver, apart from Williams who put their hole in the seat. Which brings us back to Fernando Alonso on the main straight in Spain, activating the F-duct with one hand and changing
interchanging the brachic pius with the other. As you might know, humans only have two hands, so that left no hands on the steering wheel, which, depending on your position, might be deemed unsafe. I personally don't see any issue with it, as it was saving a whole tenth of a second. And that, of course, is far more important. For those interested in safety, this was the last straw. The f -duct was banned on cost and safety grounds following a meeting of the Formula One team's association after the Spanish Grand Prix. Even the teams that had developed their own versions voted against it. And while it was banned, it wasn't actually banned immediately, and the FAA still let the teams develop their systems for the whole of the 2010 season, hence the Monaco spec F duct on the McLaren that I mentioned earlier. It also inspired other interpretations, otherwise known as bending of the rules in later years. McLaren went one step further with their system in 2011, dubbed the W duct, which changed airflow around the front wing rather than the rear wing. When driving in a straight line, the airflow would pass through the hole in the tip of the nose cone, flow down the wing pillars and out through the slots on the underside of the front wing in a W formation, hence the name. What made it different to the F duct was that it was a passive system. There was no moving parts or holes for the drivers to cover. And that is how Mercedes argued its legality. However, this was also banned as the FAA deemed that the inlet in the front wing nose cone can only be used to cool the driver, which in itself is funny. No engineer cares about how warm or cool their driver is. But by far the biggest impact that the F duct had was by inspiring, yes, you guessed it, DRS, which was introduced in 2011 and has been present in F1 ever since. It's believed that DRS would never have been introduced without the data that the F duct gave the FIA and teams. What the F duct showed was a relatively inexpensive and simple way to help the cars overtake. McLaren also designed a car that had four pedals and two of them were used in a really weird braking system. If you haven't seen it yet, click here to find out why it was so fast. And if you're not subscribed, please click that button. We are so close to having 1 million of you F1 fans subscribing to Driver61. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.